Hey guys, time to do a spell guide for my magic six. Um, gonna be going over all of these spells. There are eleven for each school, with nine schools in total. Up first, we have the school of fire and the first spell, torchlight. Torchlight is a fire spell with a spell point cost of 1 and it increases the radius of light surrounding your party in the dark basically it makes the screen brighter uh, if you are in a dark area Norm, uh, it has a duration of 1 hour per point of skill and at expert and master it makes the screen brighter I put Torchlight at RP tier. It is the. It is completely useless. It has no real value or function function other than purely aesthetic. Uh, if your screen uh, is dark for you enough to where it affects the quality of your gameplay, I suggest changing your resolution. Otherwise, uh, Torchlight doesn't really have much utility at all. So it's there's no reason other than for RP reasons to use this spell. It is, you automatically get it with the fire skill uh, at the start of the game. So it's not like you actually have to you know get it, but it is doesn't have any real use. Uh, that's going to benefit you. Up next we have Flame Arrow. Flame Arrow is a fire spell with a spell point cost of 2 and basically what it does is it shoots an arrow that functions as an actual arrow in that it can miss uh, with that it, and it does 1 to 8 points of damage with uh, I think a fire bonus yeah the fire skill is a bonus to hit so it's always gonna do 1 to 8 damage uh, at expert it costs 1 point it's one spell point and it's a fast recovery rate and then at master it costs zero spell points and a fast recovery rate this spell is also RP tier it is complete it is the worst damage spell in the game aside from maybe one other one and there's no real reason to cast it it is the fact that it has a chance to miss and the damage is pitiful just shooting an arrow which if your sorcerer can obviously get is going to do more damage and it's probably going to be a little more likely to hit and it's going to probably be faster completely worthless spell RP tier up next we have protection from fire it is a fire spell with a spell point cost of three and it basically adds resistance to fire equal to your skill and fire magic and lasts an hour per point of skill at expert it's two per point of skill uh, for resistance and master it's three points resistance per point of skill protection from fire is automatically cast with the spell day of protection so uh, there, uh, after you get day of protection, there's no reason to cast this spell. Uh, day of protection is going to cast the spell along with every other resistance, and it's going to cast it more effectively. Um, so obviously, this spell is useless if you have day of protection. But assuming you don't, or until you you do. Uh, fire resistance is good to have because there are a lot of monsters that deal fire damage uh, up until the end of the game uh, you have devils obviously uh, you also have red dragons you have 
uh, fire elementals. So having resistance to fire is obviously good, but the fact that day of protection uh, surpasses this spell, uh, I'd put it at C tier. Uh, it has uses in certain situations depending on what party you have, but uh, if you can get dark magic then uh, I would pass this spell because obviously day protection is going to be way better at doing the same thing. Up next we have Firebolt. Firebolt is a fire spell with a spell point cost 4 and it's a single target fire spell spell that does one to four, four points of damage per point in fire magic uh, and the expert and master increases its recovery rate uh, I'm not a big fan of single target spells they're kind of lackluster uh, you can do a lot more damage with area of effect spells and in terms of single target spells, the splash uh, spells are going to be doing more damage. Uh, the only real benefit is that you can cast them far away, but Firebolt doesn't do very much damage, so obviously uh, you can use it against gargoyles and oozes and it's going to take care of them, but uh, I think that there are better options for that, so I would put Firebolt at C tier. It's not completely worthless, it's going to do damage, and you can use it against enemies that resist physical damage, but there are way better options, so C tier for Firebolt. Up next we have Haste. Uh, Haste reduces the recovery rate for your party by 25. Uh, it has a uh, it is a fire spell with a spell point cost of five. Uh, it has a duration of one hour plus one minute per point of skill. At master, it uh, that's three minutes per point of skill, and at expert, it affects your entire party. Uh, after the spell wears off, your entire party becomes weak, which is very annoying. Uh, but basically, there's nothing you can really do about that except make sure that you uh, recast it constantly. Uh, haste is obviously very good uh, if you're playing any melee party, and even if you're not, you still have to fight the reactor and that's going to help with the blaster uh, but like uh, the resistance spells haste is automatically cast with our power so once you get our power you don't need this spell you can argue that this spell is a bit more useful because it it'd be easier to recast haste than it would be to recast our power since the haste spell wears off faster than the other spells so in that sense you could uh, argue that it might be more useful so in that you know you would want to keep recasting haste as opposed to our power but um, I think I'm still gonna put it at uh, C tier. Uh, yeah, I think actually I'll I'll put it at B tier because it's obviously more convenient to recast haste than it is our power, especially since the recovery for our power is quite long, unless you cheese with uh, turn based. So. I think that's probably enough to put it at B tier, but I can 
uh, it's definitely not very useful when you already have uh, our power. Up next we have Fireball. Fireball is a fire spell with a spell point cost of 8 and it is an area effect spell that does 1 to 6 points of damage per point of skill and fire magic uh, that hurts uh, enemies surrounding it and it hurts your own party if you cast it too close and then at expert and master it reduces the recovery rate. Fireball is another spell that is kind of weak in terms of damage and there are better spells that you can use that do more damage that are area of effect so there's not much point in casting it until unless you don't have anything else so I would put fireball at C tier as well up next we have ring of fire ring of fire um, basically uh, hurts any monster uh, with fire damage that is adjacent to where you are doing six points of damage plus one per point of skill and fire uh, and then at expert it the radius gets larger and at master the recovery rate is reduced Um, Ring of Fire is an interesting spell in that uh, it hits enemies that are not in your field of view, that are in even in the same room. It, it's pretty easy in a lot of dungeons to cheese with this spell. Uh, you can go to Corlegon's Estate or... Icewind Keep and en enemies like in Icewind Keep that are locked behind the gate you can hit them with Ring of Fire and kill them without having to make contact with them and you can do this in a lot of dungeons because of the small uh, uh, size of distance between uh, the rooms um, so it's actually effective way to kill monsters without having to come into contact with them. Um, uh, this process is a little bit slow because the spell doesn't do a lot of damage so it's obviously going to be weaker than a lot of air effect spells and um, uh, it's, it's not going to be uh, it's going to be really uh, slow to, uh, you know, actually kill anything because unless you get the fire magic really high and then even then it's still not going to hit for very much. So, uh, it, it but it is an effective way to cheese uh, killing a bunch of monsters without having to take any damage. So, I put this at B tier. It's not a good spell. It doesn't do, there are a lot better options, but it does have some utility. Up next we have Fire Blast. Uh, fire Blast is a fire spell that costs 15 spell points, and it basically is the well, uh, first of a lot of these uh, like splash type spells where it fires off individual blasts of fire that do four points of damage plus one to three per point of skill and fire. Uh, at normal, that that would be three. At expert, it's five, and at master, it's seven, with a quicker recovery rate. Uh, fire blast is. Uh, a very effective damage spell. I put it at A tier. It is probably the best uh, elemental spell in terms of damage because uh, 
these the these splash spells are very effective if you just walk up close to an, uh, a monster and cast the spell on them that way every single individual blast hits them so uh, in terms of damage fire blast is going to do way more damage than any other spell here aside from one spell other spell we get to later. Uh, this is as good as you're gonna get in terms of damage. So uh, I put it at A tier. It's a good spell. Uh, if you're if you don't have dark magic, then this is it should be your go-to uh, damage spell. Up next we have meteor shower. Uh, it is a fire spell with a spellpoint cost of 20 and basically it is an outdoor only spell and it shoots meteors that do 8 points of damage plus 1 per point of skill and fire at normal it shoots 8 meteors and at expert it's 12 and then it's 16 at uh, master and the recovery rate increase uh, re is reduced Meteor Shower is a, an effective uh, outdoors area of effect spell. You can use it with effectiveness up. Uh, it, you can use it in, in Dragon Sand, Paradise Valley. It's going to be effective at doing a lot of damage quickly to monsters. Uh, it's slow when it comes down and there is another spell that I think is better but there are certain monsters like Titans that resist that spell so it still has some uses I put it at B tier there are a, a lot better uh, air effect spells but it's it actually does have uses in, uh, in any party and you can still use it uh, in uh, high level areas. Up next we have Inferno. Inferno is a fire spell with a spell point cost of 25. Uh, and basically it, it works only indoors and it does 12 points of damage plus one per point of skill and fire magic to every monster that is in your field of vision. And at Expert and Master, it, the recovery rate is reduced. Inferno is not... I'm not a big fan of it. Uh, it ha it's very limited in uh, what you can cast. Obviously, it's only cast indoors. And you can only cast it to monsters that you can actually see. So, in a way, even though it does less damage... I mean, it does more damage than Ring of Fire. I think I would put Ring of Fire above Inferno, but it's still going to be do a fair amount of damage to monsters uh, in areas like the arena early on. It, it's going to be uh, a, a way to do, do a, a fair amount of damage to the monsters there. Eventually, the monsters just resist it, so... I put it at B tier. It's you can do a lot better. Up next, we have Incinerate. Incinerate is a fire spell with a spell point cost of thirty, and it is a single target spell that does fifteen damage, plus one to fifteen per point of skill in fire, and expert and master only reduces its recovery rate. Incinerate has the same problem that I mentioned earlier. It's a single target spell, and one of the things that really makes this spell kind of not as good is the damage range is so large. So you can do a lot of damage with this spell, but you can also do a, a pretty shitty amount of damage. So it, it's very wide in how much damage it does. 
uh, if you want more consistent damage, uh, Fire Blast is a lot better. Um, uh, if you don't want to come into close contact with the Diamond Gargoyles, it, it may be effective in that res respect. Um, if you want to just cast something at long range, then it's going to work, but uh, I don't like the the damage that it does, there's a more effective ways to deal damage and the damage range really makes it um, very RNG based for how much how good it is so I put incinerate at B tier it can do a lot of damage but there are a lot better options So that's going to do it for the School of Fire. Up next we have the School of Air. First we have Wizard Eye. Wizard Eye is an air spell with a spell point cost of 1. And what it does is basically uh, tells you uh, on the map where uh, monsters are as well as where items are and points of interest uh, uh, at expert and master respectively it lasts one hour per point of skill in air the spell is automatically cast with day protection so once again you don't need it after get the day protection so it, it runs into the same problem it, it obviously is a nice spell to have to see monsters uh, it's gonna be useful from the beginning but again uh, day protection is just gonna be better in that respect so I put it at C tier as well stack charge is an air spell with a spell point cost of zero. It's a single target spell that does 2d6 points of damage. It always hits unlike a uh, flame arrow and it costs two spell points at normal. At expert it's one and master at zero. This is another RP tier spell. It's uh, completely useless. The damage sucks. You're better off just shooting again even though it won't always hit it's just a waste of of uh, time basically even though you can get to zero spell points there are a lot more effective ways to do more damage uh, even at the start of the game so yeah it's a completely useless spell RP tier Up next we have Protection from Electricity. This is the same thing as Protection from Fire. It, uh, it's an air spell that costs 3 spell points and it gives resistance to electric damage from 1 at ec normal, at expert 2, and 3 uh, at master per point of skill. Like Fire Magic, uh, like Protection from Fire, it is cast automatically with Day of protection so if you have dare protection this spell is useless and uh, if you don't have day protection then uh, there aren't as many uh, monsters that do electric damage but uh, there are obviously uh, a fair amount uh, there's like obviously air elementals I think warlocks so uh, obviously having protection is good but day protection is obviously going to be better so once again it is C tier up next we have Sparks Sparks is an air spell with a spell point cost of 4 and it is another splash spell that does it fires off sparks and each individual sparks does 2 points plus 1 per point skill in air magic at Normal, it's three sparks, expert five, and then master is seven with a reduced recovery rate. Uh, like I said with Fire Blast, Sparks is going to be doing a 
uh, a lot of damage and it's very low spell points so uh, it's way more effective than any of the other air spells I put it at uh, A tier if you're pumping air magic for some reason because you don't have dark magic then this is going to be a good uh, uh, way of dealing a, f a lot of damage it's not going to be as good as fire blast but uh, if you're focusing on air magic then this should be the spell that you use um, so like the like I said with fire blast uh, it's way better to just walk up to enemies and hit them with sparks so that all the sparks hit the single target so Uh, this is going to that that's going to make it so uh, all the other damage spells are going to for a single target are going to be worse, uh, especially since it's going to be more consistent in its damage output. So, a tier spell. Up next we have Featherfall. Featherfall um, is an air spell with a spell point cost of five, and it basically makes you immune to fall damage uh, at expert at normal it's five minutes for point of skill and expert it's ten minutes and then master it's one hour featherfall is automatically cast with day protection so if you have day protection this spell is useless if you don't have day protection then there are obviously parts uh, where you want to have this spell active like if you are if you're flying and this fly spell wears off or you want to go down mountains but again why cast this spell when you have day protection so I would put it at C tier next we have shield shield is an air spell with a spell point cost of eight and it's supposed to have damage from range attacks but it only applies to missiles like arrows rocks I don't think exist uh, at expert it affects the entire party uh, it's one it's a duration of one hour and five minutes per point of skill until master which is 15 minutes per point of skill shield is automatically cast with hour of power so once again you don't need the spell if you have hour of power and shield is pretty underwhelming by itself there's very few monsters that it actually protects against I think basically uh, lizards and archers and that's it I think granted there are a lot of archers in Freehaven and uh, uh, white cap but you're not going to get much use out of this spell um, it doesn't protect against magic damage elemental damage or any other damage that's ranged unless it is an arrow so it's almost useless but not quite so since it does protect against I guess you know if you're fighting archers and you don't have day protection um, but uh, like the other uh, our power spells I put it at C tier Up next we have Lightning Bolt. That it, it, uh, Lightning Bolt is an air spell with a spell point cost of 10. It shoots a single target bolt that does 1 to 8 points of damage per point of skill and air magic and Expert and Master simply reduces its recovery rate. Lightning Bolt is a pretty garbage spell. Uh, it doesn't do very much damage. It has a very high damage range and it costs uh, a lot of da uh, spell points for the little damage it does give so I would put it at C tier way better spell it, it is gonna do damage but there are way better options 
Up next we have Jump. Jump is an air spell with a spell will cost a 15. Um, uh, and basically it uh, shoots you up in the air. Uh, in 6, this is very large. It's nerfed in 7 and 8. Um, uh, and at uh, Expert and Master, the recovery rate is reduced. Uh, I don't know about the if the recovery rate gets faster at, at normal, but you probably want it at uh, Master anyway. Um, jump is an S tier spell in my opinion. Uh, it's always going to be useful in a lot of cases. Um, you can use it in uh, Creek Spire, you know, you get the well and you can use this exploit where you cast jump to avoid having to touch the ground and uh, hit the the minotaurs or uh, spawn the minotaurs so that you can get the crystal without uh, having to worry about getting hit with the uh, minotaurs. Um, it's also good if you're because in some cases the mountains are so high that they're too high for fly and you can't go over them so this is effective in that respect uh, it's also good at dodging enemies uh, you can cast jump anywhere so if you want to avoid a bunch of mobs you can cast jump to avoid taking damage uh, it's definitely a good spell to use in a lot of cases a uh, great way of avoiding damage a great way of uh, getting across areas that are difficult to walk through S tier spell Up next we have Implosion. Implosion is an air spell with a spell point cost of 20. And it is a single target spell that does 10 points plus 1 to 10 per point of skill in air magic. And at Expert Master the recovery rate is reduced. Implosion is the same problems that Incinerate has. It has a very high damage range, it costs less spell points, and it's only single target. Um, It's far more consistent to cast sparks, even if the damage sometimes isn't as good with sparks because it's the damage is going to be a little bit lower. But implosion is going to be less consistent. Uh, I would put implosion at B tier along with incinerate. It's going to do uh, a fair amount of damage at high air magic, but there are better options for damage. Up next we have Fly. Fly is an air spell with a spell point cost of 25 and it basically allows you to enter the air and fly basically, uh, which is a lot faster and you can walk over water and buildings. So obviously it's a pretty important spell to have at normal it five minutes per point of skill at expert it's 10 minutes and at master it's an hour per point of skill fly is an s tier spell obviously um, fly is going to make the game a lot more convenient and it's going to uh, make it a lot easier to go through areas pretty much uh, a must have spell um, Uh, yeah, <laughs> pretty obvious uh, S tier. Up next we have Starburst. Starburst is an air spell with a spell point cost of 30. It's like Meteor Shower where it shoots down a star, which is 20 points plus 1 per point of skill. Uh, 
at normal it is 8 stars, at expert it is 12 stars, and at master it's 16 stars, and the recovery rate is reduced. Uh, Starburst is the most effective outdoors air effects spell aside from Armageddon. Um, for a single target, uh, you can cast it on dragons. Uh, focus on dragons and do a lot of damage to them without having to get close. Uh, it's very fast. Uh, the problem with Armageddon is it takes a long time for it to effectively kill dragons, so this is probably one of the most effective ways of killing high-level enemies. It does not work on Titans, which is kind of unfortunate, but in terms of uh, doing a lot of damage to monsters outdoors, this is your best option. I put it at A tier. All right. It's up a water because we are now on to the water school. Up first, we have Awaken, which basically uh, is a water spell that is a spell point cost of one and it just wakes up your party from sleep. It's three minutes. It, it works if your party, if, if a party members are asleep less than three minutes per point of skill. At expert, it, it's one hour. And master, it's one day. Um, mostly use this spell to uh, wake up your party if you get an encounter. Um, and there are also monsters that have sleep effect um, however if you're fighting those monsters they'll usually hit you and wake you up anyway Awaken I put it at B tier it does have uses but you're gonna find that it's not you're not gonna use it very often uh, and most of the time the Awaken is going to not be necessary uh, but there are obviously points that it's uh, useful to have and if you get an encounter while sleeping then that's an easy way to wake up your party so it has enough uses that I would put it at B tier Up next we have Cold Beam. Cold Beam is a water spell that uh, has a spell point cost of 2 at Expert. It's 1 and Master it's 0 with a quicker recovery rate and it's like Stack Charge. It does 2 to 6 points of damage. Um, like Stack Charge it is a completely useless spell. I put it at RP tier. Do not use this spell. Uh, it is a complete waste of time. Up next we have Protection from Cold. Uh, like fire and air, it gives resistance to water based on, or cold, um, based on uh, your skill in water magic. Uh, it's one at normal and then expert it's two and three for master resistance per point of skill. Protection from Cold is automatically cast with Day of Protection, so it is useless if you have Day of Protection. If you don't, it's still not very good because there are not many monsters that do cold damage, and the ones that do aren't very powerful. You have Water Elementals and uh, Sea Serpents. And I think Master Monks. That being said, it's still gonna provide some protections. Also, Thunder Lizards, so I still put it at C tier with the other resistances. It's useless if you have day protection, but if you don't, it's going to have uses in some cases, so C tier spell. 
Poison Spray is a water spell with a spell point cost of four. Um, uh, it does. It's another splash spell. It, it shoots out a spray. Uh, at normal, it doesn't. It's just one. But at expert, it's three, and master, it's five. It does two points of damage plus one to two per point of skill in water magic. Uh, unlike what it says, there are a lot of monsters that do resist poison. Um, uh, most of the high level monsters resist it. Undead resist it. Uh, this is, in my opinion, the weakest of the splash spells um, in terms of damage. At some point, if you get Water Magic high enough, it can do better than Sparks, but it, uh, more monsters resist it, so. Uh, plus, you know, oozes also resist it too, so I think gargoyles resist it, Man, uh, maybe, I don't know. Uh, but I put it at B tier. It's going to do more damage if uh, than most other damage spells. Um, uh, if they don't resist it, so it's still good in that respect, but... Uh, there are obviously better options, so B tier. Up next we have Water Walk. Water Walk is a water spell with a spell point cost of 5. It lasts 5 minutes for point of skill. And then Expert, it's 10 minutes. And Master, it's 1 hour. Uh, also, uh, well, it's uh, basically what it does is it makes you be able to walk on water without taking damage. Uh, it also drains spell points. I forgot to mention with fly as well. Uh, it drains spell points. So you want to make sure that uh, you don't have zero spell points or else you're going to fall and die. So... Um, the same applies to water walk where if you if it runs out then you start taking damage although it's not as fatal water walk is uh, kind of a not unnecessary spell once again because a fly fly makes you fly over the water so why would you need to cast water walk uh, unless you don't have fly unless you're uh, going to bootleg bay before free haven or going to um, the islands before free haven water walk doesn't have much point so I put it at C tier it's almost useless but meaning on how you explore the, the game then it can be useful in some cases uh, also maybe a new serpigal but Again, uh, it's already uh, overtaken by another spell. So, up next we have Ice Bolt. Uh, Ice Bolt is a water spell with a spell cost of eight. It fires a single target bolt of ice that does one to seven points in damage per point skill in water magic, and at expert and master reduces the recovery rate. Um, Ice Bolt is, I think it does more damage from what I uh, experienced than Lightning Bolt, but it's still a single target spell, um, and it has the same problems where you can obviously do a lot better damage. Um, so I would put it, I'd actually put it at C tier as well even though the damage isn't quite as bad as Lightning Bolt or Fire Bolt. Next we have Enchant Item. Enchant Item is a water spell with a spell point cost of 10. And it... You can basically use it to give enchantments to unenchanted items. Um, at expert, the enchantments get stronger, and at master, you can enchant weapons. It has a 10% chance of working per point of skill in water magic, so at 10, it has a 100% chance of working. 
I uh, put enchant item at B tier. Um, it obviously can give you uh, enchantments to items, which you know it, it's nice to have, but the enchantments in six aren't very good, so it's not going to be all that important. You can also use it to farm gold. You can buy items and enchant them and then sell them and conceivably get a more more money out of that. Uh, this process is really slow. I don't know why people do it, but uh, that is something you can do. Since it does have obvious uses and it can make the weapons and items you get stronger, I put it at B tier. But not as good as it is in 7, in my opinion. Up next we have Acid Burst. Acid Burst is a water spell with a spell point cost of 15. It does... It's a single target spell that does 9 points of damage plus 1 to 9 per point of skill. Uh, and an Expert Master reduces recovery rate. I think it's a... I think it does poison damage. So I think some monsters do resist it like undead and oozes and a lot of high level monsters um, this spell actually uh, does a more it's more decent in terms of damage um, uh, it's obviously inferior to fire blast because it's only single target uh, uh, it is uh, less spell point cost than, say, uh, Incinerate, uh, but kind of runs into the same problem where it has a very wide damage range, and the damage range isn't even all that good, so I would put it at C tier, actually. There are way better options. Uh, uh, it's a lot weaker than well now that I think about it uh, if you're going if you're pumping water magic uh, it's if you get it high enough it can do a fair amount of damage so I think I might put it at B tier for that um, but it's still not very good um and it's going to be doing less damage than incinerate. So unless you have a really high water magic, that's not really all that good. Up next we have Town Portal. Town Portal is obviously a very OP spell. Uh, it's a water spell with a spell point cost of 20, and it has a 10% chance of work per point of skill. So at 10, it will always work. It allows you to teleport to towns. Uh, there are six towns in the game that you can teleport to, being New Serpical, Blackshire, Freehaven, Whitecap, Mist, and Silver Cove. At normal and expert, it uh, it only teleports to the last town that you. Uh, went to uh, at normal it can't be cast at, uh, indoors at master is when you can choose the six towns you want to teleport to obviously town portal is S tier uh, it is one of the best spells in the game uh, being able to teleport anywhere or to any town is very convenient you can teleport to any town and go to a temple immediately and heal your whole party so it's the most effective healing spell in that sense um, of course uh, if you're in danger you can teleport out uh, it's pretty obvious uh, as to your spell very important um, anything that you would want uh, and you can 
just teleport to it, the area immediately. Uh, it's very makes the game very convenient and easier. So obviously, S tier spell. Up next, we have Ice Blast. Ice Blast is a water spell with a spell point cost of 25. It fires off seven shards of ice, so it's kind of a splash spell, but you don't have control over it. It basically shoots something out, and then it those shards just uh, go uh, to different places. Um, it does 12 points of damage for each shard, plus 1 to 2 per point of skill in water magic, and expert and master. It reduces recovery rate. Ice Blast isn't very good. Uh, it, you don't have much control over where the shards go. Uh, it, it's pretty weak uh, in terms of damage. The only real use I have of it is you can use it on fire elementals because they like to fly really high uh, and you can maybe cast it and do a little bit of damage. Uh, but uh, I would put it at C tier. It's not something that you really want to use. Up next we have Lloyd's Beacon. Lloyd's Beacon is a water spell with a spell point cost of 30 and it basically creates a wherever you are it will create a like something basically stored in your spell book like it'll save that area and when you use the spell you can recall to that very spot um, at normal it is only one area at any given moment at expert it's three and master it's five and uh, it's one week per point of skill that it lasts um, and then it's less if you don't have master Lloyd's Beacon is obviously like Town Portal, very OP spell. Uh, just being able to save any area, very convenient. You can beacon a dungeon and then teleport out and then go right back to where you were. You can use it to beacon to wells like the Creek Spire one uh, to get buffs immediately. I mean, th so much utility from this spell. Um, S tier spell all the way. I don't think I have to explain that to anyone. You guys already know that. Up next we have the School of Earth. Starting off we have Stun. Stun is an Earth spell with a spell point cost of one. Uh, at expert and master uh, well basically what it does it's supposed to stun the enemy but it basically doesn't do anything it basically just moves them back a pixel or something at expert master it's supposed to have a stronger effect I don't see the effect in fact we can show this right now yeah see like it doesn't do anything so obviously our P tier spell is completely useless. Doesn't do anything. So, completely pointless. Next, we have Magic Arrow. Magic Arrow is an Earth spell with a spell cost. Spell point cost of 2, 1 at Expert, and 0 at Master. And it basically, like Flame Arrow, it shoots an arrow. It does 3 to 8 points of damage, so a little bit more. But, like, uh, Flame Arrow, it can miss, so it's just as useless. Um, uh, obviously, you should just shoot with an arrow. It's going to do more damage, and you don't have to waste time uh, firing the spell. Uh, so, RP to your spell, once again picture from magic uh, just like the other protection spells it gives resistance to magic 
which is one resistance per point of skill and then expert it's two and master it's three uh, like all the other resistances it, with day protection uh, it automatically is cast so it's useless with day protection without it uh, there are obviously a lot of monsters that fire off magic damage also it protects against status effects like death like Q's death effect so obviously magic damage is very having resistance to that is very useful but once again you'll need it if you have day protection so it like the other resistances it is C tier next we have deadly swarm deadly swarms is a single target earth spell with a spell will cost of four and it does one to three points of earth magic one, one three points of damage per skill in earth magic and expert and master reduces the recovery rate uh... it's once again like firebolt it's n not a very good spell it doesn't do a lot of damage it's uh... there are obviously way better options c tier up next we have stone skin stone skin increases the armor class of a character by five plus one per point of skill in earth magic at expert it affects the entire party and it's one plus five minutes per point of skill um, at master it's one and plus fifteen minutes per point of skill and it has five spell points to cost um, it's automatically cast with our power so if you have our power it's useless if you don't then obviously having armor class boost is nice it's not great but Again, you don't need it if you have day protection. Uh, you, if you have it, you might as well use it. If you don't have day, or, or excuse me, uh, our power. So, like, uh, well, uh, like shield, I put it at C tier. Up next, we have blades. Or blades is an earth spell with a spell point cost of eight, and uh, it. Is a single target spell that does one to five points of damage per point of skill in earth magic and expert master reduces the recovery rate blades is a garbage spell it barely does any damage uh, it's it also it's barely better than firebolt even though it's eight spell points I put it at C tier it's it's a good case for being RP tier but it it's gonna do a decent. Uh, it's gonna do a little bit of damage if you have an high enough skill. So, at least sometimes. So, C to your spell. Moving on to Stone to Flesh. Stone to Flesh is an Earth spell with a spell cost of ten, and it heals a stoned character. Uh, It works if the, the character is stoned less than three minutes per point of skill. Uh, at expert, it's one hour, and master, it's one day. Um, problem with stone flesh is that a lot of the cure spells is that you already can just teleport to a town and heal it. Um, it that being said, uh, if you if your mage is stoned, then it obviously uh, can have can be useful in that regard. Uh, there aren't that many min enemies that can stone. It's basically Medusa's and Agar's abomination. I believe like the highest uh, tier of that uh, monster. Obviously, it has uses. So um, because you can use it to heal your sorcerers, uh, or if you're too lazy to go to a temple, uh, it's going to be useful. So. I put it at B tier. Not going to be using it often, but it's nice to have. Next, we have Rock Blast. Rock Blast is an Earth spell with a spell point cost of 15. It shoots a a rock that you can't control. Uh, it basically, just shoots like a uh, right in front of you, and it, it bounces off walls, and it does. 1 to 8 points of damage per skill and earth magic and expert and master reduces recovery rate 
One of the problems I have with Rock Blast is that it's hard to control. You don't have any control of where it goes. You have to aim. You have to do a specific camera angle to make sure that it works correctly. Uh, like Fireball, it also hits your own party. And with that being said, it it is an effective air effect damage spell like the Ring of Fire. You can use it to hit enemies without having to come into contact with them by just having shooting a rock blast and it having bounce it bouncing off walls. Um, but like Ring of Fire, it also is fairly. S it's not as slow, and it's going to do more damage than. Ring of Fire, but it's still. I would put it still at B tier. It's uh, it's gonna do a fair amount of damage, but there's way better options. In terms of damage, uh, but it does have some uses, so I put it at B tier. Next, we have Turn to Stone. Turn to Stone is an Earth spell with a spell point cost of 20, and it turns certain enemies to stone. Uh, if the duration is 5 minutes per point of skill, Expert 10, Master 20. Certain uh, high level monsters resist it, lower level monsters can be cast on it, cast on it reliably. Uh, I think you can uh, hit enemies. Wow, dear stone. Let me just go ahead and see. No, you can't actually. It looks like it. Uh, unless it's um, only hostile. Um, uh. I think uh, you can't. Um, uh, it's not really all that good. Um, uh, I would say uh, it, it. If you want to disable an enemy, it might be useful, but uh, it doesn't affect a lot of monsters that are high level and. I'm pretty sure you can't hit enemies while they're stoned, so I'd put it at C tier. It's not completely worthless though, because it does it can disable enemies, so uh, it does have some use in that respect, but uh, it's almost useless. Up next, we have Death Blossom. Death Blossom is an Earth spell with a spell point cost of 25, and it shoots like this this thing in the the stone in the air. That does 20 damage plus one per point of skill and earth magic, uh, and it, it expert master increases the radius of effect, and it has a faster recovery. Death Blossom is an RP tier spell. It is completely useless. You can't control where the Death Blossom goes, and as you can see right here, uh, it's very hard to actually uh, focus on getting this thing to hit it almost never does and the damage isn't even that good if it does hit so completely useless spell RP tier lastly for earth magic and all the sorcerers uh, elemental spells we have mass distortion it's earth spell with a spell one cost of 30 and what it does is it does damage it says damage equal to 25% of monsters hit points plus 2% per point of skill in earth magic. I don't think this is true. Uh, at normal and uh, expert and master the recovery rate uh, gets lower. Um, what I've found is that this is just a big damage spell like Incinerate, it has a very high damage range. Sometimes it does low damage, sometimes it does high damage. It's a magic spell, I believe, so. And uh, monsters that resist magic damage are unaffected. Gold dragons can't be hit, for example. Um, uh, it's kind of like Incinerate, it does a lot of damage at high level, but it has a high damage range, 
and it's only single target and it costs a lot of spell points so I would still put it at B tier so that is it for the um, elemental spells Okay, now time for the self schools. Starting off with spirit magic. First, we have spirit arrow. Spirit, is, uh, spirit arrow is a spirit spell with a spell point cost of one. Uh, at master, it's zero, and it fires an arrow that's basically like a actual arrow from a bow, in that it has a chance to miss just like flame arrow just like magic arrow and it does one to six points of damage so it's the least damage and spirit magic skill increases the chance to hit uh, obviously useless spell uh, any like regular bow uh, is going to hit for more damage uh, so RP to your spell Next we have Bless. Bless is a spirit spell with a spell point cost of two and it gives uh, a character pl uh, plus five to hit plus one per point of skill in spirit magic. Uh, at expert it affects the entire party. It lasts one hour plus five minutes per point of skill. At master that's one hour plus fifteen minutes per point of skill. Uh, hour of power uh, casts bless automatically so if you have hour of power the spell is useless if you don't have hour of power this is a very good spell because it you know having if you're doing any melee party this is going to uh, be very important in making sure that your characters hit um, so uh, if you don't have light magic, you really want to pump uh, spirit magic for bless and heroism specifically. But like I said, um, if you don't have, if you have our power, the spell is useless. So I put it at C tier as well. Up next we have Healing Touch. Healing Touch is a spirit spell with a spell point cost of 3 and it heals 3 to 7 points of damage per, uh, well, 3 points of damage, 3 point, 3 to 7 hit points and then at Expert that's 5 to 9 and Master at 7 to 11. Healing Touch is a really garbage spell. The fact that it, a lot of healing spells, or all of them in 6 are very lackluster. Um, healing Touch is probably the worst. Uh, yeah, it's the worst. Um, the fact that it's RNG based means that it's even worse. Um, uh, the recovery rate that. Um, I mean, like you can see right uh, here. I am at 60. And uh, spirit magic, and it did not. Uh, uh, it was not particularly fast, so I think the the uh, recovery rate does not actually um, uh, slowed to a significant degree, if at all. Um, and if one of the main problems that um, that healing spells you know if you were to look at the sp spell points healed to or spell points used to hit points healed ratio at master it has the potential to heal let's see 2.3 at worst so you're healing 2.3. If you get 7, then you're healing 2.3. Uh, 
hit points per spell point. At most, it would be 3.6, which is still garbage. Uh, that's worse than mass master first aid. It's almost worse than expert first aid. Expert first aid is going to be we'll get into later. It's going to be almost as good as healing touch in terms of how much it's healing. So uh, healing touch, uh, I'd put it at RP tier actually. It's completely useless because first aid is going to be better healing spell than healing touch. Period. So uh, no reason to, to get this spell. Next we have Lucky Day. Lucky Day is a spirit spell with, with a spellable cost of 4 and it basically gives a luck bonus of 10 plus 2 per point of skill. At Master it affects the entire party and at Expert it's plus 3 per point of skill. Lucky Day is automatically cast with Day of the Gods so if you have Day of the Gods this spell is useless. If you don't have Day of the Gods, uh, having luck bonus is nice. It reduces a chance of getting hit by status effects and taking more damage from elemental damage, so it's nice to have on, but if you have Day of the Gods, it's useless. So once again, like the other buff spells, I put it at C tier. Up next we have Remove Curse. Remove Curse is a spirit spell with a spell point cost of 5 and it heals the curse status effect. Uh, it, uh, it works if your character is cursed less than 3 minutes per point of skill. At Expert that's 1 hour and Master it's 1 day. Remove Curse is a very nice uh, utility spell because there are a lot of monsters in this game that can curse and it's very annoying because curse for spellcasters means they fail a lot so it's very nice to have that um, basically uh, particularly with harpies they cast mass curse which curses your entire party uh, having this is very useful um, I put it at A tier because it has a lot of utility of just being able to just get rid of curse because obviously if you have spellcasters then uh, having a cursed party is quite annoying so I put it at A tier for that reason. Up next we have Guardian Angel is it which is a spirit spell with a spell point cost of eight and basically what it does is it uh, it has a status effect for your party where while it's active uh, if you die while it's active then when you cheat death then you get you still have half the gold that you had when you died as opposed to losing all of it and at expert you are restored with half life and at master it's full life and it lasts one hour per point of skill and spirit magic guardian angel is an rp tier spell it is useless um, even if you're going a no reload run uh, you can just use the bank if you're worried about losing gold um, there's no reason to ha use this spell at all. Uh, up next we have Heroism. Heroism has a spirit spell with a spell point cost of 10. Uh, it adds damage plus 5 plus 1 per point of skill. Uh, it affects the entire party at Expert and there's a duration of 1 hour plus 5 minutes per point of skill. At Master, that's 1 hour plus 15 points. 15 minutes per point of skill. Heroism is automatically cast with our power, so it's useless. Uh, without, well, with our power, without our power, it's obviously very useful. Adding damage, very important. 
most important for any melee. So you pump spirit magic and for anyone that, that casts spirit and you're gonna be if you get high enough with spirit items you're gonna be it's kind of like arms master in a way but like I said unless you have you can't cast our power this spell is worthless so like all the other buff spells I put it at C tier Turn Undead uh, 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 is next. It's a spirit spell with a spell point cost at 15, and it basically causes all undead to run away. Uh, spell lasts 3 minutes plus 3 minutes per point of skill, and uh, at Expert Master it reduces recovery rate. Um, uh, I do believe this spell works on all undead. I don't know if it works on Liches. Uh, I can't remember, but um, so I I can't uh, I can't remember quite, but uh, it does work on specters, which is kind of nice because specters can one shot your characters. So uh, it, it is pretty nice to have in that case. So. Uh, it's a more effective crowd control spell than another one we're going to be getting to, so I would put it at B tier for that reason. Uh, it's a little high on the spell point, but department, but uh, there are enough monsters that you can get use out of this spell, so B tier. Up next, we have Raise Dead. Raise Dead is a spirit spell that costs 20 spell points and like it says it raises a dead character which uh, at normal that's less if they were dead less than three minutes per point of skill at expert one hour master one day um, um, raise dead is, it can be useful um, there are monsters that have a status effect with death so if you have a Lloyd's Beacon caster or temporal caster that's killed by a Titan then uh, it's nice to have a uh, raised dead on hand so um, uh, of course if you have multiple it's not as important so Um, it's more convenient to just go to a temple and heal so I would put it at B tier unless the Lloyd's Beacon caster is the only or the temple caster is the only one that you have um, uh, because uh, what happens with Raise Dead is that it removes all the spell points uh, on your character and hit points so they're basically they have one hit point and no spell points so uh, I don't particularly like it for that reason but uh, it obviously does have uh, uses in some cases so I'd still put it at B tier Up next we have Shared Life. Shared Life is a spirit spell with a spell point cost of 25 and basically it takes all the hit points of the combined hit points of your characters currently and it divides them evenly and adds one per point of skill in spirit magic. At expert this is two and master it's three. Now Shared Life is probably the best healing spell terms of healing uh, simply because that added bonus um, if you have let's say you have 10 points in spirit and then you have two items that give spirit magic um, uh, that's going to be uh, 
healing 66 per party member. And then if you were to rank that by uh, spell point to hit point uh, healed ratio, that's going to be like a little over 10.5 spell point and that's just the added bonus uh, not to mention like if you have like fighters and other and a spellcaster it's gonna heal the spellcaster to full health but the fighters are gonna they might lose spell points uh, hit points but then they also gain it back so uh, with uh, different class parties it kind of it's varied in how good it is, but um, it does work as an effective healing spell uh, to a degree. Obviously, healing spells in six are garbage, but I think uh, ultimately, at uh, this spell is probably going to be the best one out of them. So I put it at B tier. Up next we have Resurrection. Resurrection is the same thing as Raise Dead, except for Eradication. Um, it heals an eradicated character less than three minutes per point of skill from when they were eradicated uh, at Expert. That's one hour, and in Master it's one day. Uh, the main monsters that eradicate uh, are droids. Like uh, Terminator units, I believe. I think they're the only ones, actually. Uh, which there are a lot of in the control center, so... In that respect, it's... Uh, uh, it's nice to have, but like Ray's Dead, it heals it them at zero uh, spell points, so I'd still put it at B tier. Although, only the the um, temple in Freehaven actually heals uh, eradication so you have to make sure that you do the priest quest if you don't have resurrection so mind magic is next next we have uh, meditation meditation increases Select and personality of a character by 10 plus 2 poor point of skill. I uh, forgot to mention, obviously, it's a mind spell with a spell point cost of 1. At expert, it is increases the intellect and personality by 10 plus 3 poor point of skill, and master it, it affects the entire party. Um, it's automatically cast with Day of the Gods, so it's useless without day, with Day of the Gods without it. It's still not really all that good. Uh, it's not going to give you a lot of spell points unless you have a druid. Even then, it's just going to be a little bit. Uh, you can use it to... If you have a low hit intellect character, you can use it to get learning, I believe, uh, item or merchant to get the 30 required uh, intellect or personality, but uh, it does have a positive effect, and it has some uses, but like, again, unless you don't have, it, uh, it, it's only useful if you don't have Day of the Gods, it, so I put it at C tier. The next is Remove Fear. It's a mind spell with a spell point cost of 2 and it cures fear. At normal, it it works if you're afraid less than 3 minutes per point of skill. At expert, that's 1 hour. And master, it's 1 day. Uh, fear is not a, a bad status effect. Really, it just lowers stats a little bit. Uh, it also raises speed, I believe. Um, you can also heal it with rest. Uh, it's not going to hurt your melee very much. 
and the intellect penalty is relevant because you uh, when you rest it's removed anyway so I uh, the removing fear isn't very important uh, so I would put this spell um, at uh, really uh, honestly um, well you can make a case that it's RP tier because it's almost completely useless but the fear effect does I think lower I think might and accuracy something like that so it could lower your damage a little bit but it's like not very important um, so I would put it at C tier it's almost useless but not quite up next we have mind blast mind blast is a mind spell with a spell point cost of three it d does it's a single target spell that does five points of damage plus one to two per point of skill and expert and master reduces recovery rate uh, Mind Blast it does magic damage like uh, all the self-offensive uh, spells, so it, a lot of monsters resist it, especially at the higher level. It's a pretty bad spell. Um, I would put it at C tier. It does do damage early on, but later on it's completely useless. Up next we have Precision. Precision adds accuracy uh, to your entire party at Master, only single target at Expert. It is a mind spell with a spell point cost of 4. Increases accuracy by 10, per plus 2 per point of skill at Expert, that would be 3. Precision is automatically cast with Day of the Gods, so if you have Day of the Gods, the spell is useless. If you don't, then the accuracy bonus is nice it'll make you hit more but like I said why would you cast this if you have day of the gods so like all the other buff spells it is C tier up next we have cure paralysis cure paralysis is a mind spell with a spell point cost of 5 uh, and it heals paralyze uh, it works if your character is paralyzed less than three minutes per point of skill ago uh, expert it's one hour and master one day um, there aren't that many monsters that paralyze I believe it's agar's pets and gargoyles I think that's it there might be another one that I can't remember but uh, there's not much use for this. With that being said, uh, being able to heal paralyzed from diamond gargoyles is kind of nice. Although I would, you should probably be kiting them. So I put it at B tier. It's not very important, but uh, obviously it's nice to have in case your characters get paralyzed. Up next we have Charm. Charm uh, basically makes a hostile uh, monster. Uh, friendly like a peasant uh, it's a single target spell and if you hit it then it immediately becomes hostile it lasts 3 minutes per point of skill uh, at expert at 6 minutes and master 12 minutes I put charm at RP tier it is completely worthless uh, it has no use whatsoever uh, all it would do is uh, make a single target uh, immobile for a short period of time uh, which isn't very useful and uh, a lot of monsters after like the first few dungeons resist it completely so it is completely worthless RP tier up next we have mass fear mass fear is a mind spell and 
It basically makes all monsters that can't resist it in your field of vision afraid, which means they run away. Keep in mind this does not work in turn-based, so if you use turn-based they come towards you. Uh, and it lasts three minutes per point of skill in mind magic and expert and master reduce the recovery rate like charm it is pretty worthless uh, it a lot of monsters vast ruin monsters in this game resist it after the first few dungeons um, Obviously, it's just better to cast a, a damage dealing spell. With that being said, uh, I don't think it's as useless as Charm because it can work as a somewhat effective crowd control spell early on if you are doing solo or have a weak party. So, I don't think it's RP tier, uh, but it's still pretty bad. I put it at C tier. Up next we have Feeble Mind. Feeble Mind is a mind spell with a spell point cost of 15 and it's supposed to make spellcasters unable to cast spells. Uh, it lasts 5 minutes per point of skill mind magic and the recovery rate is reduced with Expert and Master. I've tested this spell uh, on monsters. It does not seem to work at all. Uh, maybe it works on low level monsters but it it's a very expensive spell in terms of spell points. Uh, it's way better spells that you can cast. RP to your spell. Most monsters resist it completely, so no reason to cast it ever. Completely useless. Up next we have Cure Insanity. Cure Insanity is a mind spell with a spell point cost of 20. It cures insanity, obviously, and it only works if the insane character is was insane less than three minutes per point of skill from when you cast it. At expert, it's one hour, master, one day. Uh, insane is a bit different from fear. If you rest with uh, spell points, you lose all your spell points, so it's very important to heal that. That being said, uh, you, you can just heal it at a temple and uh, um, you don't really have to uh, worry about uh, them being insane before you take a break from fighting because the spell points it's not going to become irrelevant until you rest so uh, I would put it at C tier because it's not really all that useful if you can just teleport away up next we have psychic shock psychic shock is a mind spell with a spell point cost of 25 and it does 12 damage it's a single target spell that does 12 damage plus 1 to 12 per point of skill in my magic and expert master reduce the recovery rate uh, this has the same spell that the problem is with all the other single target spells except this is magic damage so a lot of monsters resist it and the damage is crap so uh, I put this at C tier it is very bad very lackluster in terms of damage it can do damage so it's not completely useless uh, but a lot of monsters are completely resistant to it, so I would not recommend getting this spell. And finally, we have, for mind, we have Telekinesis. Telekinesis is a mind spell with a spell point cost of 30. Uh, and what it does is you can target anything that's in your field of vision and you can click on it and it's the same as clicking on it at close range uh, this is the only self uh, well first of all let's uh, mention that the strength of effect is really irrelevant uh, it doesn't there is nothing that it is not stronger at higher points in mind magic it's just as good at one point Telekinesis is the only 
my uh, the only self spell that I have at S tier. It is very nice. Uh, you can use it uh, to hit switches from far away, open chests without having to disarm them, click on areas without having to walk up to them, save time. You can click on areas that are guarded by monsters that are dangerous so that you can enter the dungeon without having to walk up to them. Uh, just very nice utility spell. Basically the only good reason to get clerics, in my opinion, if you're going for a power gaming. So S tier spell. Next we have the School of Body. Up first we have Cure Weakness. Cure Weakness is a body spell with a spell point cost of 1. And it cures weakness. Uh, if the weak character is weak for less than 3 minutes per point of skill from when you cast it, at Expert it's 1 hour and Master it's 1 day. Uh, I put Cure Weakness at A tier, it is very useful to have, especially because if you cast Hour of Power uh, or Haste, uh, it's very likely that you're going to frequently forget uh, that Haste wore off. So every time Haste wears off, all your characters are weak, uh, which if you're have a melee care party that, that's going to suck so having cure weakness is very useful uh, even though you can heal it at a temple it's far more convenient to just cast cure weakness in most cases because chances are this is going to be happening in the middle of a fight or in a dungeon where you're not really uh, on low health anyway so it's just far more convenient to just cure weakness it um, so I would put this at A tier up next we have first aid first aid is a body spell with a spell point cost of two and it heals five hit points uh, again the recovery thing doesn't seem to have any effect uh, at Expert it is 7 points and Master it is 10 hit points. Uh, first Aid is kind of irrelevant after you get Cure Wounds, although I will say that the spell point to hit point ratio of spell points used to hit points healed. Uh, at Expert, uh, well, um, it's, it's First Aid is still better than Cure Wounds up until 7 points in body magic at expert so until you get seven points in body at expert uh, first aid is going to be better than cure wounds with that being said uh, it's still not very good it doesn't heal very much it's very slow uh, I put this at C tier as well Um, not very good. Just heal at a temple, really. Up next, we have protection from poison. Like all the other protection spells, it gives a resistance to poison. One per point of skill, and two at expert master three. It costs three spell points, and obviously it's body. Um, like all the other resistance spells, you can cast it with day of protection, so it's useless if you have day of protection. If you don't, uh, there are a lot of monsters that uh, do poison damage, especially early on, and they can, and it also reduces chance of getting poison status effect. So uh, I think it disease as well. So it definitely has utility, but if you have day of protection, it's completely worthless. So like all the other buff spells, I put it at C tier. 
Up next we have Harm. Harm is a body spell with a spell point cost of 4. Harm does 8 damage, uh, plus 1 to 2 per point of skill and body magic. And Expert Master simply re reduce the recovery rate. Um, like other offensive cleric spells, it's really lackluster. Uh, and also, the, I think it does magic damage, so it's not a lot of monsters can be hit by it, so I put it at C tier. Not very good. Next we have Cure Wounds. Cure Wounds is a body spell with a spell point cost of 5. It heals 5 hit points plus 2 per point of skill, uh, and Expert Master simply reduce the recovery rate. Um, up until 7 in Expert, uh, Cure Wounds is going to heal less spell points. Heal less hit points for spell point used, then first aid. Um, and uh, Cure Wounds is not very good. Uh, let's say you have 12 points in body. Let's say you have two rings. Or you have Guinevere or uh, Regrain plus a body uh, item that you're looking at. That's 27, so 59. Uh, late game, that's not really very much. So it's very slow. Mid game, it's a little bit better. Uh, if you, if you, uh, it's obviously better to just go in a temple and heal. So I would put this at. Mm, yeah, I think uh, C tier is still appropriate. Um, not healing spells in six, are just not very good. Um, Next we have Cure Poison. Cure Poison is a body spell with a spell point cost of 8. It cures poison, obviously, but only if they were poisoned less than 3 minutes from point of skill from when this spell was cast. At Expert, that's 1 hour. Master, 1 day. Cure Poison is very relevant, again, because you can just go heal it at a temple. It doesn't have any negative effects until you rest, so uh, I would just go to a temple, um, and it does not hinder the character that can go to a temple, so I would put this at C tier. Next we have Speed. Speed is a body spell with a spell point cost of 10, and it gives a speed bonus of 10 plus 2 per point of skill and body magic, 3 at Expert and it affects the entire party at Master. Speed is automatically cast with Day of the Gods, so it is useless if you have Day of the Gods. If you don't have Day of the Gods, it's obviously uh, useful. Uh, having recovery rate reduced is pretty important if you have any melee party, so it's nice to have in that respect, but uh, once you get light magic, this is completely worthless. Like all other buff spells, I put it at C tier. Next we have Cure Disease. Cure Disease is a body spell with a spell point cost of 15. Heals disease. Works if the character diseased it was diseased less than 3 minutes per point of skill from when this spell was cast. And Expert, that is 1 hour. Master, 1 day. Like Cure Poison, it, it's way better to just go heal it at a temple. It's also very hard to get early on, so... Most of the monsters that do disease, you're not going to have the Cure Disease spell, so it's not very relevant. And again, way better to just go to a temple and heal it after the fight's done or dungeon's complete or whatever. So, C to your spell. Up next we have Power. Power adds a bonus to Might and Endurance. Uh, it is a body spell with a spell with cost of 20, and it is... Uh, a 10 point bonus in Mind Endurance plus 2 per point of skill. Expert, it was 3 per point of skill and Master, it affects the entire party. Power is automatically cast 
with Day of the Gods, so if you have Day of the Gods, this spell is useless. If you do, if you don't have it, then, you know, it, it has uses, obviously. It gives a little extra hit points, a little uh, extra damage. Uh, so it's C tier spell, like all the other buffs. Next, we have Flying Fist, which is a body spell with a spell pool cost of 25. It hits for 30 damage plus 1 to 5 per point of skill in body magic and the expert master simply reduce recovery rate uh, like o uh, other body spells this is magic damage so a lot of monsters resist it uh, it does do more damage than psychic shock but the fact that it's magic damage still makes it kind of worthless uh, I put it at C tier very lackluster spell and finally we have power cure which is a body spell with a spell point cost of 30 and it heals your entire party uh, f for 10 hit points plus 2 per point of skill and body magic and expert master simply reduce the recovery rate uh, like all the other healing spells, it is very lackluster. Um, uh, power Cure um, doesn't heal very much. And once again, if you were to look at these, uh, the spell points is quite costly. It's 30. And if you were to um, think of it like the spell point to hit points heal versus spell points used. Uh, the rate uh, would be so you have four characters so you're healing two if you have 12 in body magic um, let's just say um, that's four characters you're only healing like uh let's see the math uh, 10 plus 2 so so that would be um, yeah it's 34 okay so and then yeah it's you're healing 4.5 hit points per spell point which that rate is lower than cure wounds at master it's also lower than first aid it's you're healing less now obviously it's faster now if you have rings that help with body magic it's gonna be a little bit better but it's still gonna be quite weak um, it's gonna be way too slow it's gonna cost way too much spell points so uh, it's a very lackluster spell. I would put this at C tier. Uh, healing is just not very good. Just go to a temple, um, and the, the, they're just way too slow, and they cost way too much spell points. Uh, and if you're in the middle of a fight, uh, the power cure is not going to save you if you're getting your ass beat. So, really not a fan of power cure. Um, so that's going to do it for the uh, self spells. Alright, all we have left are the. Uh, is a uh, light and dark magic. Starting off with the light magic, we have. Create food, which is a light spell with a spell point cost of 20. And what this spell does is it creates food for your party. Uh, it's one day, or um, one food, plus one per 10 point skill. And master, it's three per 10 points. So if you have 20 points at master, it's going to be. It's going to create six food. Uh, this spell is completely worthless. Uh, you know a better create food spell? Uh, the tavern. Uh, 
uh, which the the one in Blackshire, I believe, that gives 60. So already 10 times better than the light skill at 20, uh, and it's a lot easier and doesn't cost any spell points. So completely worthless spell, RP tier. Up next we have Golden Touch, which is a light spell with a spell point cost of 25, and what this does is uh, you can take any item in your inventory and immediately get gold, which is uh, at normal 40% uh, the value, at expert it's 60, and master it's 80. Uh, and it has a 10% chance to succeed per point of skill and light, so at 10 it works every time. This spell is also completely worthless. Uh, if you want to get the best prices, just go to a store. The only reason you would use this is if you're really lazy, but and you don't want to go and, and sell things in shops. But it's going to cost way too much spell points, so. Uh, there's not really much benefit in using this spell. It's another RP tier spell. Next we have Dispel Magic, which is a light spell with a spell point cost of 30, and it's supposed to uh, remove, uh, remove any magic that is currently active on monsters, and at Expert Master it reduces recovery rate. Uh, this spell is completely useless. Uh, it is another RP tier spell. Uh, there are no buff spells or beneficial spells that I'm aware of that monsters can cast, so this spell doesn't do anything. Uh, there's absolutely no reason to cast this spell. It's basically like casting nothing. So, yeah, RP to your spell. Up next we have Slow, which is a light spell with a spell point cost of 35, and it's and it uh, has the speed of a monster, uh, and it lasts 3 minutes per point of skill in light magic. Uh, this spell is... Uh, not is pretty shitty as well. Uh, it doesn't work most of the time. Uh, on a lot of high level monsters they're gonna resist it. Uh, I tried this on like a black dragon or a, a red dragon and it it took like 10 tries. Uh, the time that you spend casting this spell is gonna be longer than the time that it will take to kill them at normal speed and it's expensive for mana, uh, completely worthless. Don't use this spell, RP tier. Next we have Destroy Undead, which, do, which deals damage against any undead creature. Uh, 16 points, plus 1 to 16 per point of skill, and extra master it. It simply reduces the recovery rate. It is as a spell point cost of 40. Um, uh, this is kind of similar to incinerate and implosion in terms of its damage. It's going to have a very high damage range, uh, but it is going to do a lot of damage with a high uh, level in light magic. Of course, there aren't that many monsters that you really want to use this on. It's only single target, so really the best use you would get out of it is power liches, I guess. So you can, uh, at a high light magic, you can one-shot power latches with it, but um, I'm pretty sure, I can't remember, oh yeah, Shrap Metal is almost as much mana as this spell, so it's obviously inferior, um, it costs more than even Incinerate, and twice as much as Implosion. Um, 
obviously you shouldn't really be using this spell but simply because it does it is gonna one shot any powerful and dead uh, and there are power liches are quite annoying I would put this at C tier it's not completely useless but it, it's damn close all right, so we're moving on to an actual good light spell. Uh, it's this, uh, Day of the Gods, which is a light spell with a spell cost of 45. And this is, it uh, just casts power, meditation, speed, lucky day, precision, and I don't know what GA is, but uh, basically all of the the stat boosting spells it casts all at once um, uh, at normal it, it casts at twice the skill in light magic and then at expert it's three and master it is four, uh, four. Uh, this is obviously a very powerful spell uh, if you just pump light magic you can get your stats really high that's gonna help with recovery rates with speed, AC, damage, attack, I mean, uh, a hit rate, luck, uh, resistances, uh, I mean, just really just a very important spell going to buff out your party uh, even more and makes a lot of the self spells completely irrelevant. S tier spell. Uh, if you're doing any melee, you definitely want this spell active at all times. Up, uh, and it has 45 uh, spell points, so not really all that much for what you get. Um, up next we have Prismatic Light, which is a light spell with a spell point cost of 50. Basically it's like Inferno, it flicks uh, 25 points of damage plus one per point of skill and light magic for every monster uh, in your field of vision uh, and it can only be cast indoors and expert and master reduce the recovery rate um, it, this spell kinda has the same problems that Inferno does in that uh, it's very limited in the damage that it can do it is going to do more damage than Inferno, but it costs twice as much. It also does a magic damage, which a lot of monsters resist. I would put this at C tier. It's uh, there are a lot better options of doing damage, so I wouldn't really bother with it. Um, next we have Hour of Power, which is a light spell with a spell point cost of 55, and it casts Haste, Heroism, Shield stone skin and bless at twice the skill in light magic per skill in light magic at normal at expert it's three times and master four times obviously like day of the gods it is a very powerful spell you can get your damage in melee and attack hit, hit chance very high obviously haste uh, being able to cast it uh, very convenient uh, you can get light magic pretty high to where haste uh, actually lasts a little bit longer than it would at base level and even with uh, uh, even with a spell casting party you still get the benefit from the stone skin um, which is gonna buff out your arm AC pretty good. Uh, the shield doesn't really matter too much because you barely ever get any benefit from it, but uh, it's another S tier spell. Uh, it's one of the big three buffs, and the third we'll get into with dark magic, but obviously another spell you want to keep active. Um, you don't have to worry about it. Uh, wearing off, although you do have to check for haste since it doesn't last as long as the other buffs. And it has a wait, did I? Yeah, I think I did. Um, 
Up next we have Paralyze, which is a light spell with a spell point cost of 60. And what it's supposed to do is make a monster paralyzed, um, which lasts 3 minutes for point of skill. Light magic. Um, and then at extra master reduces recovery rate. The spell is completely useless. Uh, uh, this shit doesn't work. It definitely doesn't work on high level monsters. Uh, and it also costs a shitload of spell points. Uh, anything that you would want to paralyze, you're better off using an actual uh, offensive spell. This doesn't do anything. The monsters that you would want to cast it on aren't affected by it. Complete RP to your spell. And next we have Sunray, which is a single target light spell with a spell point cost of 65, and it does 20 points of damage plus 1 to 20 per point of skill in light magic and at expert and master the recovery rate is reduced at normal uh, it's uh, very slow although it's still pretty slow uh, at master um, and it can only be cast outdoors and only during the day so very specific conditions for this spell to work. Uh, this is not a good spell. Uh, the damage is better than incinerate, I guess. And a lot of other single... I think pretty much any single target spell that's uh, long distance. But... Uh, it costs a shitload of spell points and it's only single target so it has the same problems as other spells except it has a much uh, as the other single target spells except uh, the the spell point cost is much larger and it's very limited in when you can use it so uh, it, it can do a lot of damage so I'm gonna put it at C tier it's not completely worthless but I would not recommend using this spell at all. Up next we have Divine Intervention, which is a light spell with a spell point cost of 70, and it basically just heals your entire party f to full health and spell points. And uh, for the cost of the mana, obviously, and uh, aging your character 10 years, who casts it? and at expert can be cast twice a day and master three times. Uh, Divine Intervention has the same problems that a lot of other healing spells have, which is it's just better to use a uh, tab, uh, temple. Oh, I also forgot to mention this spell can only be cast during a specific time of day. I think it's like five or six o'clock in the morning or something like that so it's very limited in when you can cast it and uh, it obviously it, it's the best healing spell because it heals everything even spell points but it's it, it, it's very limited and when you can cast it and obviously you can just go to a temple one area where it might be d decent I guess is at the arena since you can't teleport out um, but you're gonna find that you're not gonna have many opportunities to even use this spell and the 10 years is not aging isn't that big a deal because uh, assuming it's like a cleric that's casting it I mean obviously it probably wouldn't be um, the the penalties you get for aging don't really matter, but uh, not a very good spell. Um, although I guess being able to regenerate your spell points uh, pretty convenient if you're too lazy to go and go teleport or you don't have town portal for some reason. So I'll put it at B tier. 
it is the powerful uh, heal, but obviously there are better options. So uh, even just resting, if uh, that would probably be better uh, in most cases. But uh, anyway, finally we have dark magic. Starting with reanimate, which is a dark spell with a spell point cost of twenty. Uh, and what it does is it resurrects a dead monster, which is, uh, and it uh, they get ten hit points per skill po point of skill in dark magic. Uh, at expert it's 20 and master it's 30 up until their max HP I don't really care for this spell uh, basically all it does is revive monsters um, uh, there are people that use this spell to resurrect a high level monsters so that they can continually kill them again for experience so it's a way to farm experience I don't like I don't understand why people do this uh, it seems far more less time consuming like it takes a really long time to get uh, any decent experience you're gonna be sitting there for hours a much quicker way is to just go to jail and Armageddon areas repeatedly. Uh, again, the aging doesn't really matter, uh, and you're gonna accomplish what this spell does a lot better. With that being said, I guess the the technical benefit of farming experience without any negative effect, I guess it does accomplish that. So I'll put it at C tier. Up next we have Toxic Cloud, which is a dark spell with a spell point cost of 30, and it fires off a cloud that does 25 damage, plus 1 to 10 per point of skill, and Expert and Master reduce the recovery rate. Um, this, do this is going to be doing more damage in most cases than a lot of the single target spells because it has the 25 damage uh, at base but one thing that I don't really like about this spell is you can't control where the toxic cloud goes so it just fires off uh, and uh, I find that I end up missing a lot with this spell you have to be sure to angle your look your camera look in a way to actually hit the monsters which is in some cases there doesn't seem to have any rhyme or reason where it goes um, uh, so you really want to cast this spell very close so that it doesn't miss in which case you're better off using shrap metal so it, it is going to do a lot of damage and technically it's less spell points than shrap metal so oh also I think it does poison damage I think so some monsters resist it I put it at uh, B tier good damage spell but it has a lot of drawbacks up next we have mass curse this is supposed to uh, basically put a curse effect on all monsters in your line of vision it lasts two minutes per point of skill uh, at expert three minutes and master four minutes it is a it has a spell point cost of 40 this is a completely worthless spell. It doesn't do anything from what I can see. Uh, I don't think curse actually affects anything. It's it's not going to make spellcasters... Like, w when you're cursed, it obviously really f sucks because you can't 
cast any spells. And I think it affects your hit chance too, but when you cast it, it's really not very good. And most monsters resist it that you would want to cast it on, so it's a, an RP tier spell. Up next, we have Shrap Metal. Shrap Metal is, in my opinion, the best spell in the game, except for maybe Lloyd's Beacon or Town Portal. It is a spell point cost of 50, and it does 6. It's another splash spell. So each individual fragment does 6 points plus 1 to 6 per point of skill in Dark Magic. Uh, at expert at normal it's three fragments at expert it's five and master it is seven um, you don't get any better DPS than shrap metal uh, if you get basically you walk up to any monster you have Guinevere and you have good points in dark magic uh, you're going to be able to one-shot any monster easily. Uh, definitely best way of uh, dealing with basically anything in the game. Uh, it does physical damage, so most monsters don't resist it. The only monsters that I think would resist it are oozes and... I think Diamond Gargoyles and maybe a few couple of others, but I think uh, I think there may be one more. But um, you can pretty much kill anything with this spell. Uh, very powerful. Uh, it should be your go-to manner of damage if you just have a sorcerer party and just spam the shit out of this, and you're gonna be doing quite well. Killing dragons, titans, uh, devils, anything, uh, it's gonna work very nicely. S tier spell. Up next we have Shrinking Ray. This is a dark spell with a spell point cost of 60, and um, it was. Uh, It uh, reduces the size of monsters, and uh, and that the monster deals uh, uh, half damage uh, when it's shrunken. At expert, it's one third, and master, it's one fourth. And it lasts five minutes per point of skill in dark magic. Um, Uh, this spell um, could conceivably um, have use because it can make monsters easier to hit. Uh, the problem is that it costs a lot of spell points and it's just better to, if, if you already have dark magic, to just use uh, a good offensive spell like Shrap Metal, which is 10 spell points less, so the spell is kind of useless. Also, it's single target, but it does have a, a positive use, so I'll put it at C tier. Next, we have Day of Protection, which is a dark spell with a spell point cost of 70, and it casts Protection from Fire. Uh, all the protections basically fire, electricity, cold, poison, and magic, along with Featherfall and Wizard Eye. Uh, it's cast at twice the skill per point in Dark Magic, and at Expert it's three times, and Master four times. This is a very powerful spell, obviously. You can really buff out your resistances very high, plus it's a dark spell, so you can uh, increase your DPS while also uh, increasing the effectiveness of your resistances. Uh, of course, don't need to explain how 
a lot of the monsters in this game use elemental damage, uh, fire, electricity, plus magic damage, very important. Reducing the chance of getting insta-killed by uh, a titan or Q. Very nice spell. Completely one of the most broken spells in the game. S tier, obviously. Next we have Finger of Death, which is a dark spell with a spell point cost of 80. And what it's supposed to do is it's a single target spell which uh, when you hit a monster it has a 3% chance per point in skill and dark magic of them being instantly killed which is raised to 4 and 5 4 at expert and 5 at, at master uh, this text is a complete lie uh, the spell does not uh, work at all um, it says that it works 5% per point of skill, but um, conceivably this spell should work 100% of the time at Master with 20 skill points, but uh, that is not the case. A lot of monsters uh, resist it or they're immune to it, even if they are affected by it. Uh, I've tested with this spell recently, and you can finger of death a red dragon but it took like 10 tries and I have 60 masters so very awful spell plus it costs a shitload of spell points no reason to use it uh, you can cast two incinerate and implosion with this spell same spell points and uh, with a decent enough uh, f even with just like uh, just a master with uh, I a Morgan you're probably going to be able to kill anything so plus you know again the magic damage it's a magic spell so a lot of monsters just completely are immune to it so awful spell RP tier once again up next we have Moonray, which is a dark spell with a spell point cost of 90, and what it does is it's basically like a proto soul drinker, except that it can only be cast outdoors and at night time, and all monsters are dealt 1 to 4 points of damage per point of skill and dark magic, while your party is being healed with 1 to 4 hit points per skill and dark magic so if you have a high enough dark skill this uh, can be uh, the biggest it can do, do more healing than any other healing spell uh, but the problem is is that it costs a shitload of spell points and you can only cast it at a specific point at time of day outdoors you can get some use out of it. You can go to Dragon Sand or Paradise Valley and use Moon Ray when you're fighting dragons, but again, it's very spell point costly, so uh, you're not gonna do enough damage for it to justify it. Um, I, I guess you could use it if you're low on health and just a way to get a big heal but I don't think it's that good I would put it at a C tier but I guess it does have technically a good benefit up next we have Dragon's Breath which is an AoE spell that is as a spell point cost of 100 and it deals 1 to 25 points uh, of damage per point of skill and dark magic to all uh, close by monsters like fireball and rock blast it can hit your own party and its recovery rate is reduced at expert and master uh, in terms of AoE damage it can obviously pump out a shitload of damage the problem that I have with this spell is it is very costs a lot of spell points 
if you have in game, you know, you're probably looking at like about 800, I think, maybe a thousand spell points if you have really good meditation. So that's like what 10 casts. You're not really gonna get uh, be able to use this spell very much before having to uh, uh, heal your party. So it's very limited, and also it has a very high damage range. So you can get a very shitty roll. That being said, it is going to do a lot of damage to a lot of monsters close together. So I'd still put it at B tier. Up next we have Armageddon, which is a dark spell with a spell point cost of 150, and what it does is is that it inflicts, one, uh, inflicts 50 damage to all monsters in an area... Oh, I also forgot to mention, with uh, Dragon's Breath, it is a... Uh, f I think it does fire damage, so... Uh, a lot of monsters don't resist it. Uh, because fire damage, unless they're fire, they're. Although I, I might be mistaken from that, I might. I can't remember, but um. Uh, dark magic. Uh, Armageddon is a dark spell with a spell point cost of 150, and it does 50 damage. Plus one per point of skill and dark, for uh to all monsters in an area. It can be cast twice per day at expert or oh, it can be cast once per day at expert twice per day and master three times per day it only works outdoors uh, this is a very powerful spell uh, you can do uh, a shitload of damage very easy way to just kill any monsters in an area uh, also very great way to farm experience what you do is what you can do for example in creek spire you can click the well that gives plus 30 level reset the well and then keep doing that like 50 times spawn a shitload of energy drakes and then use armageddon kill all of them get a shitload of experience at the start of the game um, one of the problems that the spell does have is that it's uh, you can only cast it a few times. One way to bypass this is to uh, uh, wait a day until it resets and just keep doing this until you kill everything. Uh, it does cost a lot of spell points. Uh, it's best in areas where you have access to a temple and uh, therefore can very effectively uh, kill everything with ease. Uh, in other areas you might have to use potions and uh, it would definitely help to have a ring as well that uh, regenerates spell points as well as having healers because it does hurt your own party as well. That being said, this is any way to deal with any monsters in an area. You can very easily kill anything. It's going to be a lot harder for areas like Dragon Sand unless you have a very high skill in dark magic, but in basically any area that's not that doesn't have very high HP monsters, you can kill everything in the area reliably and it's also a great way to farm a shitload of experience so this is an S tier spell very good um, and finally we have dark containment uh, which is a dark spell with a spell point cost of 20 and what this spell does it basically you it's a single target spell uh, which uh, basically deals a bunch of effects to uh, the target like stones, shrink, shrinking, curse, uh, I think, uh, 
not uh, maybe slow basically all of this the the mind affecting spells and some of the you know the stoning and the shrinking spells uh this is a completely garbage spell this is basically just a meme spell there's no reason to use it uh at all uh, it costs a shitload of spell points uh also uh, it, the recovery rate is reduced at expert and master forgot to mention um uh, it's single target and obviously a lot of monsters can resist it so uh, completely garbage unless you want to just see a monster get get really small and stone there's not really much benefit to using this spell at all it's just a waste of spell points and it's only single target anyway complete waste of a spell RP tier spell uh, don't use this spell for any reason other than for RP reasons or just uh, for the memes I guess so uh, that's gonna do it for the spell guide uh, I might do spell guide for 7 and 8 soon. See all of you guys later.